Hey YouTube, in this video we're going to prove that the sine function is continuous at every single real number. Recall that a function is continuous at x equals c. So let me just say f is continuous at x equals c if for every epsilon greater than zero we can find some number delta greater than zero such that for every real number x, so for all x and r, with the property that the distance between x and c is less than delta, we have that the distance between f of x and f of c is less than epsilon. So that's the delta epsilon definition of continuity. So we're going to use that uh, to do the proof here. Um, this proof is actually pretty simple and just basically relies on some trig identities and some other facts. So rather than just do the scratch work, I'm just going to show you the proof. So proof. It doesn't take some huge intuition to find the delta as it typically does in these problems. So we'll start by letting epsilon be greater than zero. And we're going to choose our delta to just be epsilon, believe it or not. It's that simple. Then, for any x, for any real number x, with the distance between x and c less than delta, and now we're going to look at the distance between sine x and sine of c, right? We're proving continuity at an arbitrary number c, and that will show it's continuous for every number c. So we look at the absolute value of sine x minus the absolute value of sine c. And now here's the trick. Uh, there is a trig identity, right? So this is equal to absolute value 2 cosine x plus c over 2 sine x minus c over 2. So you have an absolute value here around these, around the uh, cosine and sine. So you have a couple things you can do here. So you know that the absolute value of cosine and the absolute value of sine, they're both less than or equal to 1. But we also know that the absolute value of sine x is less than or equal to the absolute value of x. Right, so that's also useful. So what we'll do here is we'll use this one, the one that tells, it's, that tells us that it's less than 1 for cosine, and we'll use this one for the sine function. So this is less than or equal to, you can pull the 2 out, 2 times 1 times the absolute value of x minus c over 2. The 2's here will cancel because you can pull it out of the absolute value, so you just get the absolute value of x minus c, and that's less than delta. We know that by assumption. But delta is equal to epsilon, and that completes the proof. So not a very difficult proof, but it does rely on this fact, and it does rely on the trig identities. I hope that made sense.